it's so rare, especially in the last couple of months that we've had any blue skies, any nice weather, that even though it's freezing cold, I just had to get out today. I've popped along just to my local venue, Sheerby Valley Lakes, and as you can see, I'm having a brilliant day. I've caught loads of, loads of fish really, but I've caught a lot of F1s and also some really nice carp. And I'm just fishing really, really simple feeder tactics, but maybe with a little bit of a twist, nice little F1 there. And the twist being that I'm fishing really small feeders. So you can see there, that maggot feeder is absolutely tiny. I've started on a ground bait feeder. I've switched to the maggot feeder. To be fair, I'm getting a fisher chuck now. It's really good. And what I'll do is, just after I've unhooked this fella, there he is, nice little F1. Is I'll talk you through how I'm fishing today because the way I'm fishing here is how I'm fishing in a lot of competitions at the minute and also how, how a lot of guys are catching a lot of fish on different venues up and down the country. It's a really simple way of fishing, but you know, often it's the simple ways that get forgotten. Let me talk to you about the setup to start with, and I'm gonna start at the reel, to be fair, and the main line, because I want to use really light feeders. I wanna make a smaller disturbance on the water surface as possible when I'm casting in. I want to use a really light main line. So I've gone for four pound main line. It's the M-Tech main line. And because I'm using a light main line and I'm repeatedly casting all day, I don't want to have any hassles with any lost feeders, any crack offs, any lost fish under my feet. So I'm using a shock leader. It also helps when it comes to tying the end, end rig as well, but I'll come on to that later. So I've got a shock leader. I've used five big arm spans of shock leader. So it's probably about 26, 27 feet of shock leader. That means that on this 10 foot rod that I'm using today, nice soft 10 foot rod, it goes up and down the rod, a couple of turns on the reel when I'm casting and also when I'm playing fish under my feet. Let's get down to the business end. Onto that shot leader, I've slid a snap link onto the line. That's gonna obviously house the feeder. I'm not using any links today because we're catching quality fish, fish that sort of like tear off and almost hook themselves. I don't really need a link. So I'm just using a little snap link there. Then I tie a little tiny loop in the end of the main line with a long tag and I keep the long tag because I want to tie a twisted boom. With the loop tie still in the loop, there's a little bit of weight for me to twist the main line against. I twist the main line, run the main line between my fingers and thumb, twizzle it up, and then just simply tie a double overhand knot just to tie a little loop there. The small loop at the end means that the boom doesn't close up so I can attach my hook length loop to loop style and obviously it creates a really nice boom that kicks my hook length away from the feeder and just stops tangles. I've got two number eight stock that the Lynx wheel sits, sits up against. That acts as my little buffer sort of bead um, substitute. And then obviously you can see that it's a really, really neat setup. You're hardly ever gonna get a tangle with that setup. Now hook length wise, I've gone for 012 and I've gone for a size 18 hook. It's 50 centimetres long, the hook length. The water's reasonably clear today, so I want a little bit of fall through the water. I've got some longer hook lengths on spools. Might try one of those if bites become a little bit um, hard to come by later on, but 50 centimetres working really well at the minute. 012 might seem a little bit light to some people. You know, it's three pound, but it's winter. These fish have been caught all year. They've seen it all, all through the summer, all through the autumn, they've seen Every, every sort of presentation. So you've got to be quite cute to catch these fish now. And also I'm using quite small baits. So I don't want really heavy line and big hooks to sort of inhibit the natural movement of those baits. Double maggot, a maggot and a pinky single maggot. They've been my go-to hook baits today. Let me chuck this out and then I'll run through my bait selection and how I've prepared my bait. I'm itching to have another chuck out, see if I can catch, catch another couple of fish. So bait wise, I've got some classic winter matchman style baits. You can't go anywhere in the winter, obviously without maggots. Red maggots, maybe I'd like a fleck of white in there as well, just a few whites as a change bait, but a pint of red maggots is gonna, is gonna catch your fish on nearly every venue in the country at this time of year. So you can't go anywhere without some maggots. I've got literally a handful of pinkies. Now, 
They're not looking exactly lively, these pinkies. They've been in a bag for probably a week and a half now, but they're just there, just to tip a single maggot or just to add a little bit of color to a hook bait. So if I want to maybe fish two maggots and a, just to slip a pinky on, it's just something different. And I just think that little pink flash of color gets you, gets you an extra few fish. The maggots are gonna go for a maggot feeder, but I do like, and as, it, as, it, as has happened today, a little bit of ground bait's been really good, especially early on in the session. So, as soon as I get to the bank, I add the water to the ground bait. The ground bait I'm using today is the Swim Stim, it's the Crushed Expander, the Milled Expander, it's the Amino Black. Now, I can harp on it here about black ground baits in clear water in winter time, but I'm sure you guys already know, winter time equals black ground bait. Now, this stuff is really nice, it's really fine, it disperses to nothing in the water, so you're just really adding a bit of scent in the water. There's not much there for the fish to actually graze on there's no big particles it's so fine and, and if you mix it nice it's really really heavy as well so it, so it stays pr pretty close to the bottom now you've got to add plenty of water to this mix so i like to add plenty of water is that a bite i think it is oh i missed that one so i like to add plenty of water to the to the ground bait what as i'm that me up bait look as I'm mixing it, that means mixing the ground bait as soon as I get to the bank. So I've only done half a bag today, no need for, to do much more bait than that. Half a bag of milled expander, loads of water to it. It's gonna absorb that water and almost dry out totally once, um, once you get round to really in the bait. So I over wet the ground bait. It almost feels really claggy and you think, oh, I might have ruined that, but trust me, you haven't. Then what I like to do, as I've done today is just chuck that out, set up the rest of my kit, get nice and comfortable, probably take 30 minutes, 40 minutes setting up the rest of my gear. By the time I go back to the ground bait, it'll be absolutely perfect or it might even need a little bit extra water, a little tiny bit of extra water and then whack it for a riddle. You, you've got to be riddling your bait at this time of year. It, gets rid of all the big particles, it creates a really nice fluffy mix, and it goes into a feeder just absolutely perfectly. It adds a little bit of air to the mix as well, so when you ram it in a feeder, it still melts away once it's on the bottom. That's the bait side of things. Let me talk to you about the feeders that I'm using today. In my little bag here, my little feeder bag for the winter, I've got what I like to call my micro feeders. So it's just a small selection of feeders that are absolutely tiny. Small cage feeders, three squares, I've even got a couple of two square feeders in there for really, really tough days when I want to feed, you know, really small amounts of bait. But you'd be surprised, obviously, at this time of year, the fish don't want loads of food, you're just trying to spark the odd fish into having a go. And small feeders are really the way to go. So I've got some micro maggot feeders, they cast absolutely brilliantly because the weight is all based at the base of the feeder. They zoom out like little bullets, you can chuck them all around your peg, you're not feeding loads of bait, and they're the feeders at the minute that I'm catching a lot of fish on. And to help get a bite just a little bit quicker, I'm using a little modified version today. I've just cut a little bit of a hole in the base of the feeder. That means that I can feed a little tiny bit of ground bait with the maggots, and the ground bait puffs out of the feeder as soon as the, the feeder lands, and I just think that's getting me a few extra bites today. Now going on to the cage feeders, I've got with me, some homemade little tiny cage feeders. There's actually a guy who's sadly no longer with us in Leicester who make, used to make these feeders. And every time I go in a tackle shop, if I see any, I just buy the lot. They're absolutely brilliant. Nice, heavy, heavy lead on them so you can tighten up to the feeders. I say heavy, using that light main line makes things easier, but these feeders are probably 20 gram maximum weight. So you can see they're not, you're not, they're not going in with a big spadoose, they're making a nice little plop on the water surface. But, really nice open cages which means the bait comes out of the feeder really quickly which i think is quite important i've got a little tiny narrow one there and i've also got you know one that's slightly slightly wider and it's interesting to see just using that slightly bigger feeder the difference that you'll get towards your bites you'll probably notice as well that both feeders i'm using are really direct in that the attachment the little bit of power gum or the swivel is really tight to the weight itself, to the feeder itself. That's because I want to increase that bolt effect on the fish. I don't want any movement in the rig really before the fish feels that feeder 
I don't want a long link or anything like that. So a really, really compact little feeder, really nice compact setup. It also means that the setup isn't going to tangle, which obviously you don't want to be sitting there for ages with a tangled rig or in your mind thinking, is my rig tangled? So again, it's about keeping things as simple and as effective as possible. Let me talk to you about swim management because that's a vital part of catching a big number of fish on a commercial in winter. It's all right going to the, the hot spot straight away. You might catch one or two fish early on, but you could ruin the whole day. So I've got in front of me sort of a typical commercial fishery peg, really. I've got a far margin to cast to. You know, it shallows up onto that far side. That could be an island to cast on a lot of commercial fisheries, but this is pretty typical. Deep water in front of me before it shallows up to that far margin. Now, the last thing I want to do is cast to that far margin to, to those features straight away. First chuck in the session is always going to be quite a little bit shorter than that. So I've made sure that I've cast about five meters short of that far bank. I don't want to go in that shallow water too early. And to be fair, early on in the session, there probably won't be a lot of fish there anyway. You know, the water's still freezing. It, it's probably no more than four degrees. And until the sun comes out, those fish just aren't going to be in that shallow water. They're going to be happier sitting in sort of like five or six foot just off into that deeper water. So first cast, as I say, about five meters from that far bank. And then I'm just going to take it from there. Not clipped up today. I'm going to cast around my peg. If I find a little pocket of fish, obviously I'll keep casting to that same area. And as it's happened today, I found a nice little pocket of fish, probably in about three or four foot of water, about three or four meters off that far side, where I can cast, to the, cast on top of them. Again, not too accurately. You don't want to keep taking a fish from a little tiny area, but I can keep casting to that area, about two meters squared, and nick a fish from that area. And because I've been really careful with the amount of bait I've been feeding, just maybe six or seven maggots through the maggot feeder, a little tiny blob of ground bait every now and again, it's not spooked those fish. And we've had a really, really good day. You can tell when fish are in your peg, you get little tiny little indications, little line bites, and then the tip absolutely toes round. Beautiful bites when you get one, because just because it's winter time, those fish are still moving around. They're still you know, they still get the ump when you hook, when you hook them. So the, the tip absolutely flies around. So it's good to get a few bites even when it's cold. You can probably see today that I've got a lovely calm bay to my left on the far side. That is going to be my last chance saloon. I reckon there's going to be a load of fish in that bay, especially as the, the sun comes out and warms up that water. This, at this time of year, I rarely think the fish want to be in the wind. I mean, it's a freezing cold wind today. So if I was a fish, I wouldn't be down the windward end of the lake. I'd be out of the wind, sunning myself in that nice calm bay to my left. So I imagine that's where I'll end up chucking it at the end of the day. I'll probably exhaust this area straight in front of me before I go and start casting further and further to my left, sort of chasing fish around. And one other thing to note is when you cast to a new area of your peg, quite often that's when you catch a, a big fish. You know, when you've fished an area for a long time, as I've done now, it's probably a time for a move, to be honest. You start catching those smaller fish, those F1s, but then you cast to a new area of the, area of the swim, and all of a sudden you start catching carp again. So here's a little tip for you. Just because you've got a feeder on the end of your line, doesn't mean you have to fill it every, every time. I've had my last three fish now, just on the empty, chucking an empty feeder, only little F1s, but it's bites all the same and it's freezing. So any time the tip goes round is a bonus today. And I've had, as I say, the last three fish, just casting out, double maggot, and not filling the feeder, an empty feeder. So in theory, I'm fishing a bomb. And because I'm using these little tiny maggot feeders that plop in the water so nice, makes a really tiny disturbance. Obviously, I've built up a little area of feed there, but I don't want to keep piling feed on top of the fish. So chucking an empty every now and again, it's just going to catch you a few fish, but you can't keep doing it all day. You just need to keep swapping back every now and again, put a bit of bait in, and then you can chuck the empty feeder back again. Just keep mixing it up all day, and hopefully you just keep bites coming. Something that's been important and has probably led me on to chucking the empty feeder, to be fair today, is keeping tabs on bite times. So as always, when I'm feeder fishing, I like to have the stopwatch next to me. Do we chuck the empty again or do we fill it? I think I'm gonna just put two or three maggots in it this time. 
So I have that stopwatch next to me. Every time I chuck in, click the stopwatch, and it just gives me a nice read of the day. I can tell how the day is going then. If I'm getting bites quick, I know that I'm doing something right. Obviously, if I'm having to wait for bites, then I need to change something. And let's chuck that out. And I was having to wait a little bit longer for bites for probably the last half hour or so. And that's prompted me to chuck that empty feeder out. But as I say, you can't keep doing that all day. Well, folks, I have had a brilliant day. Considering it's January, the water's freezing, my hands are freezing, everything's freezing. We've had loads of bites. As I mentioned earlier, chucking in a new spot in that little calm bay over there has caught me a slightly better fish. Nice little common. And I think that beautiful fish, that is a cracking fish to end on. Until next time, tight lines.